Wasabi you guys, welcome to Integration B Training for Advanced. This is part 16.4. We're going to learn about trickier domain splitting integrals. So let's go ahead and get started with these trickier examples. So you're probably thinking, okay, we're going to have to domain do some domain domain splitting, but well, I mean, we're, it's only from 0 to 1. So that means that xn is going to equal to zero. Okay, but however, there's there's an issue. There's an issue here. Notice that we have an n times x to the power of n. Let's not worry about that minus one because that minus one is like this, pretty much. But notice that this means that we are plugging infinity, and then this is x to the power of n because we are between zero and one. This is infinity times zero. So how on earth are you going to handle that? Well, one way is to do, I mean, L'Hopital's rule. You, you could do that, right? From x, negative n. Uh, but good luck, because <laughs> it's not pretty, OK? It's not pretty. Uh, I think you might end up in an infinite loop here. So probably uh, not a good idea. So yeah, probably not a good idea. So let's go back. Here we have, well, there's, notice that we have n, x, n minus one. That's pretty sus. So I think we should integrate that. So let's go ahead. So we're going to derive x plus 1, I'm sorry, 1 over x plus 1, and we're going to derive nx to the power of n minus 1. Then we get x plus 1 squared, that negative cancels out in the integration by parts process, and then this is x to the power of n. Okay, so what we have here is x to the power of n, x, x plus 1, from 0 to 1, uh, because the limit n approaches to infinity, this whole portion here is going to equal to zero. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Be very careful. Um, when x, we, we evaluate at this point. We, we evaluate at this point. So plug in one, we get one half. Plug in zero, it's zero. And then. Here we have from 0 to 1, xn, x plus 1 square, dx. Okay, and now here, as n approaches to infinity, this whole portion is equal to 0. This whole portion is now equal to 0. Okay, here we don't have to worry about computing n. And the reason is because we are already plugging in 0 and 1. Okay, This is literally what x equals at this point. At this point in the process of this step, at this step, we are literally plugging in x equals to 1. Okay, It's no longer just arbitrary x to the power of n. It's now 1 to the power of n or 0 to the power of n. This is equal to a half. So our integral is equal to one half. Okay? Alright, so we have this now. You probably wished that you could do Queen's rule, but you cannot do Queen's rule in this integral. So, unfortunately, uh, that won't work. But we can, however, uh, simplify this. We can divide everything by sine, uh, sine x to the power of n. So now what we have is 0 to pi over 3. We have dx over 1 plus cotangent of n to the power of, uh, yeah, cotangent of x to the power of n. Okay, so now what? What on earth do we do? Okay, so now this is where the trickiness begins. We have to do some domain splitting, and because Whatever this is, it depends on what x is. Okay, 
So when when does cotangent of x equal? Uh, I'm sorry. We have to we have to uh, check these cases out. Kind of like how we treated x. We needed x between zero and one, and one uh, greater than one, right? Same goes for here. We need to do the same exact process. Okay, but the thing is, we don't know where though. Where where does this occur? When is cotangent of x between zero and one? So, how do we do this? I don't know why I wrote one. This should be infinity. Uh, let me rewrite that. Okay. So how do we know? How on earth do we do? Uh, I mean. You can change it. You can actually change it. If you're more comfortable with tangent, uh, that's actually okay. You know, you would have to do like one over uh, cotangent. So that would be one uh, tangent of x, and then we would have zero tangent of one. Okay. Just be very careful. You you would. You need these aside just for reference. I'm going to color this green now. And let me move this out of the way. Just kind of more space here. Okay. So now it's easier to see. Uh, tangent of x is between 0 and 1. Uh, and that's only if, like, what? Let's see pi over 4, so 0, we know 0 is part of it, but then what about from 1, uh, pi, uh, pi over 4, and then here is like pi over 4 to pi over 2, okay, I should probably put like parentheses, uh, I think that's safer, okay, so here now we know that in this interval uh, for cotangent if we want cotangent to be uh, between 0 and 1 it's gonna be pi over 4 to pi over 2 okay if it needs to be greater than 1 that's gonna be between 0 and pi over 4 okay because remember cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent x so these intervals are followed by tangent x but tangent x is a reciprocal for cotangent x Okay, that's why I need this whole list rather than oh I'm gonna ignore this and use no you cannot do that. Okay, that's how you screw up. So we have this reference in mind. All right, now let's go ahead and start splitting. So now from zero to pi over four, from zero to pi over four, uh, cotangent is uh, bigger than one. So when n approaches to infinity, it's going to be infinity. So that means that this whole integral is going to be 0. So now we're left with pi over 4. And then our upper bound goes to pi over 3. So we stop at pi over 3. And now here, cotangent is between 0 and 1. And so when n goes to infinity, this whole portion just equals to 0. So we're left with 1 plus 0. This is just 1. So our answer is pi over 3 minus pi over 4. This answer is pi over 12. So our answer to this integral is pi over 12. So notice that I still follow the, you know, the process of x to the power of n. In this case, we have a function to the power of n. And in this example, we have cotangent. And there are some times where we need to find the interval so that finding the interval helps us find where we have to split the domain okay and if you need to you can go like this change it to tangent x if you're more comfortable with that okay all right on to the last tricky integral example so here's a very tricky one right we you don't even know where to even begin because not only you have x to the power of n but you have 1 minus x to the power of n and then you're being nth rooted so what on earth do we do? Let me write this in green. 
So let me tell you a very sneaky secret. The truth about this, this is actually equal to the max of AB. Okay, this integral, I'm sorry, this limit is equal to the max of AB. So if it was, let's say, if A was less than B, then if this is the case, then this implies that A over B is going to be between 0 and 1. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite that actually. So if A is less than B, then A over B is between 0 and 1. Okay? And so now because of that, we're going to take advantage of this information. Right? If A is smaller, then I want to divide everything by B. So dividing everything by B of N, we take, so I'm factoring out B of N pretty much. B times N, now this is 1, this is A over B to the power of N plus 1. Do you see where this is going? Notice that A over B is between 0 and 1, so when I plug in infinity, this is 0. 0 plus 1, uh, whatever n is, n uh, 1 to the power of, I'm sorry, uh, 1 over n is going to equal to 0 because 1 over infinity is 0. So this whole thing is just going to equal to 1. So our answer to this limit is b, which does equal to the max of a b, since a is smaller than b. Okay, so that's how this, this works. Can we do the same thing with this here? Yes, you can. Because I already showed you how that limit works, you already know where to even. Oh, this is the integral of the max of x1 minus x. Now what? You split the domain. You split the domain, right? Where, where does it intersect? 2x equal to 1. So that's where we have to split the domain at. So from 0 to a half, uh, if we plug in 1 fourth, uh, 1 minus x is bigger. And then the other side is the opposite. And so this is our integral. Okay. Uh, without the max though, without the max formula, it's, it's the same exact process as the limit I showed you, right? Which is bigger. Uh, it really depends on uh, the interval, right? Let's say, oh, okay, from 0 to a half. And from 0 to half, 1 minus x is bigger. So because 1 minus x is bigger, we have to factor out 1 minus x and then do x over 1 minus x to the power of n plus 1, right? And because 1 minus x is bigger, this uh, equals to 0 because it's between 0 and 1, okay? It's that whole concept, that green limit I showed you, right? It's the exact same concept. Here, I just I just want to show you, just give you the correct formula. This is the same thing as 0 from, one, uh, from 0 to 1. This is just the same thing as the max of x, 1 minus x, okay? And so when you integrate this, this should simply equal to three-fourths after that basic integration okay cool all right that's about it so yeah those are the three very tricky domain splitting cases so definitely uh, you know practice those examples on your own so that you become more comfortable and aware of these limit integrals okay all right I hope that was helpful Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next part.